Hey, this is Nerion, and welcome back to another episode of my first impressions, where we take a look at some of the new titles that are out in the gaming world today. And right now, we are taking a look at Once Human. It's a free-to-play MMO shooter that has been making way since its release in July from Starry Studio. I had the chance to stream this recently, and let me tell you, I feel like someone just took a handful of my favorite games and tossed them into a blender and hit puree. What was the result? Well, a game that's part secret world, part rendered from the ashes, a dash of control, a sprinkle of new world, and a hint of division for just good measure. But is this a mixed recipe for success? Or is it something just a little bit more horrific? Well, let's get into it. First off, the story. You're thrust into a world that's been twisted by contamination uh, from an alien creature known as Stardust that has infected everything. It's all very Lovecraftian, which immediately reminded me of The Secret World, a game that's near and dear to my heart. So if you're into cosmic horror and weird lore, Once Human has that in spades. The world is eerie, it's atmospheric, and dripping with that otherworldly vibe that keeps you on the edge. And then there's the gameplay. It seems to blend elements from several titles over, that I've loved over the years. As I said earlier, um, the Division Run from the Ashes was just a couple to mention. Uh, the shooting mechanics and third-person perspective feel like it takes from those two specifically. Um, the result, though, uh, tight, satisfying combat that does keep you on your toes. It feels good, and it's not overcomplicated. Now, one of the things that really did stand out to me was just how quickly the game gets you into the action. Uh, the tutorial is straightforward, and there are plenty of built-in guides to help you if you forget what you're doing at any point during your game, which happens to me more often than I care to admit. In this game, you're a metahuman. You can survive the contamination and you're tossed right into the thick of it. The game is all about resource gathering and crafting, which I usually do find a bit of a slog in other games and get bored fairly quickly. But Once Human does make it feel surprisingly accessible. Building a home base was pretty straightforward and it didn't really take me hours and hours of grinding to get something functional up and running. For someone like me, who does tend to lose interest when crafting becomes too tedious, this was a breath of fresh air. Well, speaking of fresh air, let's talk about exploration. The world of Once Human is fairly vast, and getting around is made easier with the teleport points and my personal favourite, the indestructible motorbike, which you get fairly early on. Let's rock and roll! Whee! Oh yeah, let's go. This thing is a beast. It's capable of leaping off cliffs and landing without a scratch, which I did time and time again. It's like the game took all the ridiculous stunts you've ever wanted to pull off in an open world game and said, go ahead, we've got you covered. Now, combat, I feel, is where the game does shine. I've managed to solo a dungeon, which was marked as a group activity of two people. I wouldn't say it was easy. I did have to learn the mechanics and timing as I uh, as the fight progressed, but once I got the hang of it, I was able to get through it without too much trouble. So it does mean that this game is accessible for those people that just want to play solo. If I'd made any major error, error though, or mistakes in this dungeon, I probably wouldn't have made it. It's not a super forgiving game, and the ads that were spawning throughout the fight did tend to swarm you pretty quickly if you didn't pay attention. I do find the variation in the monsters is pretty good overall. Um, these twisted tentacled abominations and also these zombie-like creatures that look like they just crawled straight out of a nightmare. It's a blend that works well and 
I just feel like it stops the combat from becoming a little too repetitive, at least this early on in the gaming experience. Now it's not all perfect. The game has a few quirks, like the fact your character doesn't really speak, so they communicate through awkward gestures and nods, which feels a bit dated. It does seem to be pretty common though in several like MMOs I've played, especially games like Final Fantasy Online. But in 2024, I would figure with all this AI, AI uh, uh, <laughs> with all this AI technology that we have, and AI voices and all that kind of stuff, that they would be able to get something done for your character's voice to also give your protagonist a little bit more personality. It's not a big gripe, but for me, it does take away from the immersion just a little bit, especially during cutscenes where your character just looks like he's having a nervous breakdown. On the technical side though, the game does run pretty smooth on modern systems, the visuals, while not hyper realistic or anything groundbreaking, are very pleasing, uh, and the overall aesthetic is moody and dark during the night, uh, but fairly beautiful throughout the daytime. It's the kind of world that does draw you in, it keeps you exploring, um, and each area you come across offers a new bizarre sight, or should I say, monster to see. The UI I found was fairly user-friendly, the perk system uh, was easy to navigate, and crafting does not feel like a chore. It's fairly clear that the developers took inspiration from some of the best in the genre, I feel. Although it might not be groundbreaking, it does a lot of things right. So where does it leave us? Well, I've had a lot of fun with Once Human so far. It's a game that wears its influences on its sleeve, but in a way that feels like a love letter rather than a ripoff. Now, it's not without its flaws, of course, but for a free-to-play title, I'll definitely recommend it to anyone to check it out. As far as losing sanity points goes, I'd give it a solid 7 out of 10. If you're a fan of cosmic horror, third-person shooters, and a bit of crafting on the side, this might be the game you've been waiting for. I'll definitely be diving back into it soon, uh, and who knows, maybe I'll actually get around to trying out some of the group content which will allow me to revisit the game and provide some further feedback and thoughts on it. Anyway, until the next time, stay sane out there. I have once again been a non-professional gamer. And as always, that's a wrap. <laughs>